But joining us now to discuss some of the other big issues plaguing America this week is the Australian newspaper's Washington correspondent, Adam Creighton. Adam, thanks for coming on the U.S. Report this week. I've got a problem here, and I need you to help me explain this one to me. CBS News is reporting that the Biden administration has got a genius idea. They're considering a plan to admit a number, we don't know how many, of Palestinians into the United States that are fleeing Gaza as refugees and have immediate family members who are American citizens or permanent residents, green card holders. Now, we've had a bit of a drama around this in Australia, but Adam, what's the logic of the Biden administration here? And how do we know that the people they're bringing in are not somehow connected to Hamas? Yeah, look, that's a very good question, James. I mean, I'd be surprised if this actually happens, especially in this year, which is an election year. Uh, you know, partly I understand uh, the sympathy of the US government for the Gazan people. Obviously, the US is to some extent funding the war, and so they feel some responsibility to, to help some of the refugees. But on the other hand, from a national security point of view, you're quite right. It's going to be almost impossible to know uh, the view of these people of the United States. And you would probably think that, that that view of the US is likely to be a very dim one. And they could actually be bringing in future terrorists. So so I think on balance, it's, it's not a wise decision. No, no, I would probably say not. I think we're in agreement on that one. But, you know, it does sort of come to this whole question of how migration has become such a political issue in the US, because we also saw this week documents released by the House Homeland Security Committee found that the majority of migrants who qualify for the Biden administration's mass parole program are being sent into Florida. Now, I'm not being cynical if I say that this might be a way for the, for the Biden administration to be getting back at Ron DeSantis. Could it be? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yes, look, it could be. This is a bizarre program. As I understand it, it started in early 2023, and it was meant to be something like 30000 a month from four countries in South America. I think it was Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, and uh, the last one escapes my mind. But, um, but the point of the policy was, was to put pressure on those governments to stop their citizens crossing the border physically and instead to fly them in, which, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to me. Uh, but, of course, it's massively oversubscribed, and there's something like 1.6 million people on the waiting list to get into the US. And, and these people have, have no right to enter the US. This is a completely arbitrary program. They would not... Uh, be allowed in under any other uh, US program. And even more laughably, they're, you know, they're supposed to only have two years and then go home. Well, well you know, I've got news, they're not <laughs> going to go home. So, so it's going to be permanent immigration. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to me. But you know what else is interesting to me here? And I know it sounds like a dreary subject, but it's not. Here in Australia or in the U.S. is interest rates. Now, on Wednesday, the U.S. Oh, Federal yes. Reserve held a, a meeting and the interest rate stayed steady for a sixth straight meeting, keeping the level at a 23-year high to fight this stubborn, sticky inflation. This would be, to me, Adam, you're an economist, a big problem for the Biden administration if they can't get these rates rates down before the election, and yet they've also got the problem with inflation, which is killing people. Yes. Yeah, certainly that's right. Look, uh, President Biden has been saying for months now that inflation's been falling, everything's going back to normal, and he even said that he expected interest rates to be cut by the end of the year. And of course, now, as you well know, we had that meeting this uh, this week, the, the Federal Reserve Governor spoke, and he basically said there's a good chance they won't go down this year, and indeed they could even go up. Uh, but. I mean, for me, this you know this gets to the whole point that, that you know the government economists, the central bank economists, they really have no idea about the future path of the economy. I mean, you remember a few years ago they said that all their money printing would not lead to inflation, and of course it led to the biggest inflation in in you know 30, 40 years, 40 years. Uh, you know that's in Australia too, uh, which yeah. has caused huge damage. And of course then you know, more recently they said, oh, it's all right, it's all going back to zero, and of course it's not. So so they really have no idea. Uh, you know they're just they're just completely guessing. And and you know for ordinary people that's you know that's not very good news. I you know there's there's you know, no security about the future for their own finances. Well, and I mean, you know, our Australian viewers here will also be watching this very closely, too, because the talk I'm hearing, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, is that the Australian um, Reserve Bank is going to have to follow, essentially, the American uh, bank's lead on this. So if rates don't come down there, they're not coming down here. And we've also got an election coming up either later this year or at the start of next year. Yes. 
Yeah, certainly for the past, you know, three, four years, all through COVID, you've seen the central bank in Australia basically copy the US central bank with a, you know, with a lag of a few months. And I think that's, you know, that's probably going to continue. And then the other problem though that Australia has to worry about is the currency now is so weak, the Australian dollar. If you've been overseas recently, you, uh, you would have realised that, especially to the US, everything's very expensive here. And so if they don't lift interest rates in Australia, then that means the Australian dollar will fall more. Uh, and that's, you know, probably something that they don't want in the long run. Yeah, no, that's another that's another issue. As someone who just came back from the U.S., I know exactly what you're talking about. But in America, though, back to the U.S., consumer confidence, that is also dropping for the third straight month in April. And I'm hearing basically that the Biden administration is no longer talking about Bidenomics because they don't see this as a <laughs> winner right. for them on the election yeah. trail. Is that correct? Yeah, look, that's true. I think I think some journalists did a tally, and and I think uh, last year every month he was mentioning Bidenomics at least you know five or six times a week in his speeches, and now that's dropped to zero. Uh, so so I think there's a good reason for that. You know, it goes to the interest rate question. You know, of course, the inflation question. You know, and the confidence question. And also, you can't blame people for being, you know, for being confused or uncertain about the future. I mean, things are still pretty bad if you're on a normal income in the US. You've got a used car prices are still. 40% higher than they were a few years ago. House prices are up 40%. You know, that's all very well if you own one, but but if you don't, then that's, you know, that's awful. And of course, then you've got just your general price increases, food, etc. cetera. Uh, so people are a lot poorer. They have every right to be furious. Right, Adam Creighton, thank you so much for your time. Adam Creighton from the Australian newspaper.